So in today's episode, we're going to do the AFC South. So obviously, we have the Colts, Titans, Texans, Jaguars. And uh, if you want to tell them what divisions they'll be playing this year. Yeah, so mainly they're going to be playing the AFC South, that is. They're going to play the NFC North, led by the Packers, of course. And they're going to play the AFC North, led by, obviously, the Ravens. You have some other good divisions in there. We just talked about them last episode. You got the Browns, the Steelers, etc. So kind of going into first to last in terms of where they standed. I mean, you have the Texans. They are coming off of a 10-6 and 6 record. They did win the division. A lot of people forget. I think a lot of people think the Titans won the division. Texans did end up winning the division with one win over the Titans. I mean, and really just the headline of the offseason, not only for the Texans, but really the entire football league was just the deterioration of the relationship between Bill O'Brien and DeAndre Hopkins which really resulted in DeAndre Hopkins ended up getting traded to the Arizona Cardinals along with a fourth rounder, essentially for a second round pick and running back David Johnson. I mean, they added Brandon Cooks and Randall Cobb to the roster at the wide receiver position, but really other than that, didn't really add anyone else of note. I mean, along with losing DeAndre Hopkins, they lost running backs Carlos Hyde and Lamar Miller. They lost longtime cornerback on the team, pretty old now, Jonathan Joseph. They did leave or they did lose um, D tackle DJ Reader, who I got into with the Bengals kind of preview. And they did not have a first round pick and they didn't really select anyone noteworthy. They did have a wide receiver that I did like out of Rhode Island that they drafted a corner from Penn State. But really just everybody's grading this offseason for the Texans a D and F. But I would like to get your thoughts on that first. Yeah, I think we're going to see a considerable um, downgrade for the Texans this year. I mean, Bill O'Brien, I don't know why, but he's just trying his hardest to hurt this team as much as possible. Trading away DeAndre Hopkins, who arguably is a top five. I mean, we both had him in our top five wide receivers in the league. Just trading him for less than some quarters on the dollar. I mean, he they trade him for nothing. Brandon Cooks, who has really... He was good a couple of years ago, but, I mean, he hasn't been as productive as he once was. I think it's going to take a lot for um, Deshaun Watson to kind of pull this team out of the gutters and be able to push them towards the playoffs. I don't think they'll be able to make the playoffs, but we'll see what's going to happen with them. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting. I'm actually slightly higher on the Texans than everybody else are right now. They're very flying under the radar for the wrong reasons, really, just because everybody kind of has given up on their season already. But I mean, when you have Deshaun Watson, a top five quarterback in the NFL, according to me and Sam and a lot of people, you're going to have a chance. And Deshaun Watson really is just a superstar player. He's kind of like Superman when he is on the football field, holds on to the ball a little bit too long sometimes for that reason, tries to do a little bit too much on the field in terms of that for that reason. I think his injury risk really has increased not because their offensive line got worse but just because they don't have that superstar weapon like DeAndre Hopkins you're going to see him holding on to the ball even longer I believe to try to find guys open but I mean to replace DeAndre Hopkins again a top five wide receiver with two pretty solid slot cornerbacks at this point I think it's less of a downgrade than people kind of realize obviously DeAndre Hopkins I think is greater than the sum of Brandon Cooks and Randall Cobb. But again, I think that Deshaun Watson might be a quarterback who's going to benefit from not having a superstar talent at the wide receiver position just because they still have guys like Will Fuller who could stretch the field. Guys like Brandon Cooks and Randall Cobb who have proven to be able to get separation and get open in terms of just their production in the NFL. So I'm a little less low on this team than than I think other people are, than you are certainly. I still do think they're in the playoff hunt. I do like their playoff chances more than a team like the Colts, who do have a better roster than the Texans, but I'll get into the Colts a little bit later, and certainly better playoff chances than the Jaguars. So I certainly think this is a division, again, year after year. It's usually a division where, surprisingly, two teams will come out of it as of recently. I know it was very bad for a little period of time, but I do think two teams can come out of this division. I do think the Texans could be one of those teams. I mean, I don't know. I just, the, the Texans, they nor, I mean, they've won the division a couple of years in a row. They've been at the top of the division, but they still struggle against the Colts for some reason, no matter how 
bad the Colts roster is, they still struggle. So even if people are a little higher, like you're a little high on them, they, they can still drop games that they should be able to beat, like against the Colts. I mean, I'm, I'm a Colts fan, but the, their rosters are pretty – they're not – Colts have, haven't – I mean, there's still struggles, holes in the Colts roster. So, I mean, the game that they can beat against Colts might be a little bit of a downfall. Yeah, I mean, they're uh, Deshaun Watson injury away from being arguably the worst team in the NFL. That's how reliant they are on their quarterback, Deshaun Watson. But again, I do think he's so good to the point where you saw out of Carson Wentz last year, no weapons, really just a depleted roster. Not only that, just but an injury riddled season for the Eagles. You still saw him be able to muster out a nine and seven record, which in this division has been able to get a wild card spot in this division has been able to win the division even with a nine and seven record. So if they could squeeze something out like that, it's going to be a struggle for the Texans all season. Every game is going to be close. Every game is going to be high scoring. But again, if they can muster out a solid nine wins, which I believe they can, I do think they could make the playoffs. So if I had to bet on it right now, I would bet on the Texans making the playoffs just because Deshaun Watson is their quarterback. He's proven year in and year out to be a guy that can carry his team to the playoffs. So not the best bet to make, certainly betting the Texans on making the playoffs. I know a lot of people have them not making the playoffs this season, but I do think they're a little underrated going into the season just because of their quarterback. Yeah. I mean, then going into the Jags, I think we're going to say the Colts and Titans for later, but going to the Jags, I think they're going to be probably one of the worst teams in the league, if not the worst team in the league. I think this year it's more on focusing on developing kind of the younger players with, Gardner Minshew and DJ Chark and uh, all the other young players on their roster. I think they kind of also need to blow up some spots and really try to get ready to prepare to build through this draft. I mean, even if the, they might be the worst in the league, they could focus on getting Trevor Lawrence at quarterback if they really want to do so and move on from Gardner. I think this is a year to kind of focus on Gardner, see how good he really is and if he has the franchise potential. Certainly, if you watch Jaguar football next year, it is going to watch Gardner Minshew. I think the Jaguars organization, as a small market team, it's so important to have marketable players that can get attention on the national scale. So I think they do love Gardner Minshew in that sense, not only as a football player, but just as the person, as the kind of market ploy. Because, I mean, you saw last season they had Gardner Minshew Day where they handed out mustaches and shades when you entered the gates stuff of that nature. So again, I do think the Jaguars owner loves Gardner Minshew and his marketability. So I do think they're going to try to hang on to him if he even doesn't have the best season in the world. Certainly wouldn't be smart if they got the number one pick and they passed on a guy like Trevor Lawrence, though I do like Gardner Minshew. I do think Trevor Lawrence is going to be a great quarterback someday, but kind of going into their season a little bit last year, they had a 6-10 and 10 season. I certainly do not think they're going to muster out as many wins as they did last season. I mean, they kind of cleared their front office and company with Tom Coughlin. They're trying to create a new culture in Jacksonville. I know they're trying to get rid of Leonard Fournette. They did successfully get rid of Jalen Ramsey for a decent haul. They did get rid of A.J. Boye, who was a really good cornerback as well. They did get rid of Nick Foles, who they signed to an awful contract, but they were able to kind of ship that off right away. So not really too many big signings. I mean, they signed backup quarterback Mike Lennon, who just is not very good, not even a good backup quarterback. They did decline Fournette's fifth-year option. I would be surprised if he was on the team next year. And they signed a running back, Chris Thompson, who I honestly really loved when he was a Redskin, but he's really had his just entire career been plagued with injury. But besides that, really just no major – news no major offseason just plans for the Jaguars so they're certainly looking into the future yeah I mean definitely looking into the future I, I mean they still have Doug Marone as their head coach so I think it might be time after the season or even in the middle of the season to move on from him and kind of look look into the future like we just said yeah so me and Sam certainly think the Jaguars are going to be a bottom five team in the NFL arguably the worst team in the NFL next season yeah, so moving on to the last two teams, the Colts and the Titans. Personally, I think these two teams are going to battle for the top of the division. I mean, the Titans obviously made a made it to the AFC or um, yeah AFC Championship last year, so they were they won a huge 
run at the end of the season with the help of Derrick Henry, the rushing king, and Ryan Tannehill. And they signed Ryan Tannehill to a massive contract. So I think the biggest question for the Titans is, is Derrick Henry going to be able to have the same production he has last year? And is Ryan Tannehill going to be able to perform the way he did perform last year? Yeah, certainly. I mean, I think they have a wide receiver in A.J. Brown who is a bona fide just star in this league, in the making at least. I do think he's going to emerge as a solid number one wide receiver in this up-and-coming NFL season. But, I mean, absolutely huge season for the Titans. Even if everything with their kind of just Cinderella run didn't happen, they still benched their franchise quarterback, a guy that they picked second a couple years ago, in Marcus Mariota. Huge for their organization to move on from Marcus Mariota. I think that's really the biggest news going into next season that they do have just kind of a revamped just environment for their team, having a quarterback that they do believe in, a quarterback they don't have to kind of tiptoe around in terms of play calling. They also cut some just major big name players, but all of whom who were either A, getting paid too much, B, getting hurt, C, were just ineffective last year, or D, just all the above. I mean, they cut Delaney Walker, Deion Lewis, Ryan Suckup, Cameron Wake, are all major parts of their teams the last couple of years. But last season really just didn't do anything. I believe they saved $18 million from all those moves. Again, like you said, I think the Ryan Tannehill move, if he could be an average to slightly above average quarterback, I mean, for $22 million a year, I think that's an absolutely fantastic move. They did franchise tag Derrick Henry, which I think was a fantastic move to make as well. Just very smart. They did re-sign most of their team besides that. Signed Vic Beasley from the Falcons, where I do love these Falcons defenders who are going to go out in the open market because I think the Falcons defense is one of the most talented in the league, but they are one of the worst in the league just because of their coaching and schematics. So I do think it's very intriguing when a Falcons defender goes to another team, especially such a great defense like the Titans. I do think Vic, Vic Beasley could be very good for the Titans. So I certainly do think going into this season, the Titans are the number one team in this division in the AFC South. Like we're saying, they just came off of a AFC championship. But let's be a little bit careful because, I mean, we did see teams in recent history. We saw the Jaguars go to an AFC championship and just kind of shit the bed in the next season. So I can really see that happening again with the Titans, but I would doubt it like the Jaguars happened. Yeah, I mean, I, Mike Rabel, I think he's a really great head coach. He knows his personnel really well. I think it all comes down to Ryan Tannehill and how he's going to perform. I mean, if he's a game manager and he, he'll throw for 200 yards a game and he'll be able to kind of not have a one-phase type one phase offense with just running the ball with Derrick Henry, if he's able to open up a lot of things by throwing the ball, I think they'll be able to win this division. Yes, yeah, certainly. And I do think this division is going to have three good teams in it. I do think this division, like last year, you're going to have a team that's going to go 7-9. and nine. You're going to have a team that's going to go 9-7. and seven, And you are going to have a team that goes 10-6. and six. So some of these division games are going to make or break some of these team seasons like it did last year. So going into the Colts a little bit, they were that 7-9 and nine team that played last season in this division. This is a team where arguably the most talented team in the division, just in terms of players, roster, top to bottom. I mean, very shaky season from Jacoby Brissett. I mean, where he played like a top 10 quarterback at times, got injured, then played like a bottom 40 NFL quarterback, not even worthy of just having a starting job in the NFL. So I think that was a very interesting dynamic to watch the Colts last season. Yeah, I mean, Colts, they have just such great players all around. They have a top five offensive line. They have an underrated running back at uh, Marlon Mack, and they drafted um, John, uh, what's his name? I'm, I'm blanking Jonathan on his name from Taylor. Wisconsin. The running back. Yeah, Jonathan Taylor, who we'll see what he'll be able to do his rookie year. I mean, they have just great players all around. It all just comes down to if Phillip Rivers is going to be able to form, because with Jacoby Brissett last year, before he got hurt, they were at the top of this division. They were beating teams and probably a potential of a playoff team. And then Joe Bichuk, yeah, Jacoby Bichuk got hurt, and that really just kind of derailed their whole season, and they were struggling a lot of the times. But if Phillip Rivers was able to perform kind of the way he did in 2018, not last year, because last year we saw the problems he had in throwing into double coverage and triple coverage and just having interceptions, just terrible, terrible judgment. But if he's able to perform like the past Phillip Rivers, I can see the Colts 
battling with the Titans at the top of this division. Certainly. I mean, the Colts are always just quarterback play away from being a great team. Quarterback play away from being just an AFC championship contender again in the NFL. Obviously, the major offseason move they had was Phillip Rivers. But besides that, I love the offseason that the Colts had. I mean, they traded for all-pro defensive tackle DeForest Buckner. Maybe paid a little bit too much money for DeForest Buckner. Buckner, but to say that at this point, I think would just be kind of nitpicking at this point. I think that was a very great addition for their team. They also got tight end Trey Burton, who I honestly really like. I think he's very underrated. I think he was mismanaged when he was on the Bears. He was very good on the Eagles as just this kind of backup third string, but I think he could step into just the hole that Eric Ebron left where didn't have the greatest season last year. They also lost, lost Devin Funches, but like I said, they got Trey Burton. They brought in Jonathan Taylor from the draft to one of my favorite running backs in this entire draft class. And they also got Michael Pittman Jr., a wide receiver out of USC in the draft. They lost Adam Vinatieri, who sadly was an absolute black hole for this team last season and even the season before, you can argue. So, again, the Colts have a playoff roster. I don't think they have a championship roster just yet. I think they are lacking some weapons on the offensive side to be kind of considered a championship contender, but I certainly do think they're a playoff contender. I do think Phillip Rivers is going to have a better season than he had last year, and I do think it's going to be enough to kind of catapult the Colts into going from 7-9 to nine to 9-7. Nine and seven. Yeah, I mean, um, we just kind of said this off the camera. You said this, that the Colts have less weapons than the Chargers did, but... I mean, I think the Colts have just are just a better organization with coaching and stuff yeah. like that. I mean, they have a young Michael Pittman, they have a young Paris Campbell, a young Zach Pascal. I mean, if the, those pay, player uh, players are able to get some chemistry with Philip Rivers and learn from like a veteran T. Y. Hill, and I think the Colts are going to have be a pretty good offense considering their how their performance last year. Yeah, Philip Rivers is the type of guy, the type of competitor too, to to have one bad season, not let that spiral into two bad seasons, and then be out of the NFL next year. I don't think that's kind of Philip Rivers. He's such an ultra-competitive guy. He's one of the only QBs that really constantly just shit talks throughout the entire game. He's just so competitive in that nature. So I think he's really going to try to flip the script on not only his career next year, but just his season that he had last year with the Chargers. I think it's going to be one of those breakups with the Chargers where he really does want to prove He's better out without the Chargers. He's better on the Colts, and the Chargers are worse off without him. Yeah, I mean, like I said, the Chargers are just not a great organization. They're just constantly making head-scratching moves. And I think the Colts are just going to – the relationship, hopefully, as a Colts fan, Phillip Rivers is able to perform and have a good relationship with the whole Colts team. Yeah, so just kind of overviewing on this AFC South division again, I do think this is arguably the hardest division in the entire NFL to predict. Me and Sam are kind of trying to do that here. But again, with so many teams where they're not great, they're not championship contenders, but they're all playoff contenders. Three out of the four teams in this division. I mean, we even saw the Jags a couple of years ago be playoff contenders. So definitely a very tough division to be playing in right now. Again, because every single divisional game really has meaning the only reason again like I'll get into the only reason the Texans ended up winning the division last year is because I believe they had a four and two divisional record in terms of the Titans three and three divisional record and I believe the Colts had something like a two and four divisional record or something something of that nature so I really do think this is a division they play some tough games they're going to play the Packers they're going to play the Ravens but I do think it's going to come down to those divisional matchups, which is always very fun when you look at a division. So if I had to predict right now, it's so hard. I would probably say the Titans would win the division, certainly would not put money on that at all. And then I would probably say that the Colts and Texans kind of duke it out for that last playoff spot. And I do think the Texans sneak in there. Sorry for that prediction, Sam. (laughs) Uh, I'm... (laughs) Similar to you, I'm going to go Titans at number one. I think they just have good coaching, and they're going to be riding off the momentum of last year. But I'm going to go with the Colts at two. I think the Colts are actually going to battle with the Titans for the number one spot, but I'm just going to give the Titans a slight edge. Then at third, at the third um, spot in this division, I'm going to the Texans. I'm a little lower on them than you are. 
then you are high on them. I think they're going to be kind of struggle this year. I think they'll go six and ten, seven and nine, and then all the Jaguars in last place, probably the worst team in the whole uh, NFL. Yeah, I think it's definitely going to kind of be a shoe in. Even though, again, it's a divisional game, it's always tough. Jaguars are going to come out versus their division, trying to mess up their season. But I do think if you're a playoff team, it's a must-win game against the Jaguars if you're the Colts, if you're the Titans, and if you're the Texans. So one little slip-up, again, like a loss to the Jaguars, I think it's going to cost one of these teams the, their entire season. So yeah. certainly would not be surprised if the Colts made the playoffs last, or this up-and-coming year. I know I am a little bit high on the Texans compared to everybody else, but I just think, of course, again, with their superstar quarterback, I do think they're going to be able to get it done, but I certainly could be wrong in that.